Hello friends! Welcome, welcome sa ating next dose of Bible Chismis on a weekly basis. Since it's a Saturday, happy Saturday sa inyong lahat. We are going to talk about a certain influential leader sa panahon ng Old Testament warning. This is a really, really heavy story. So, brace yourselves, boys and girls. If mahili kang chismis, pero gusto mo ng good news kind of chismis, I strongly suggest, Bess, click that subscribe button. I will be here for you every Saturday to share Bible chismis. Hmm? Last week, we talked about sino ba last week? Hagar and Ishmael. And what happened to them after being banished into the desert because of Sarai. Again, takeaway is if you sway or veer away from the plan of the Lord, talagang totally magbabago ang course of history or your life in general. Um, okay, so again, today, sabi ko kanina, we are going to talk about a very influential leader sa panahon ng Old Testament. Please welcome! Wait lang. Please welcome to the stage, Cora! Woo! So, Cora. Sino si Cora? By the way, si Cora ay lalaki, ha? Hindi siya si Aling Cora sa kanto. And he's a very uh, prominent and influential leader of the Israelites um, sa panahon ng Old Testament. He is the first cousin of Moses and he is one of the leaders there. The story nila actually is from the book of Numbers, um, chapter 16. Yung buong chapter na yon, it's all about Korah and the rebellion that he started. So, you know, this story actually reminds me of what Lucifer did, diba? He, he has a good position sa in heaven and he was a worship leader of God but then he had this very selfish ambi ambition um, and he wants to be God so uh, one-third of the heavens went with him so he's a really powerful leader and this person Korah is just the same I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not gonna give you the overview anymore so he is a member of the Kohathite. Kohathites. He is a descendant of Levi. Siya yung isa sa mga anak ni Jacob. And Jacob is the son of Isaac. So yun yung bloodline niya. Um, etong si uh, Korah, his family, they are holding a very prominent position din sa, sa Israelites. Because he is his family or his tribe um, have the privilege of carrying a certain part or parts of the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting is a very sacred and special place of worship of the Israelite. So let me just give you a brief description of the tent of meeting. Ha? Yung tent of meeting kasi, um, it takes a really big space, place kung saan magkakamp or maninirahan for the meantime yung mga Israelites. This tent of meeting is composed of different heavy and big parts. Because this tent of meeting, this is where Moses would come to meet him. This is a, like a very special place. And see, Moses lang, only the high priest can enter the tent of meeting. Anyone else that is not pure or is not the high priest or is not um, appointed by God, to enter the sacred place will die on the spot. Ang sabi ng Lord, di ba? Anyone who sees me will die. But Moses is a special um, chosen person because he is appointed by God. You know, many times Moses tinanggihan niya si Lord. Ayoko niya, ayoko niya. Pero hindi. Pinili siya ni Lord. He is the chosen um, one to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and eventually become a high priest. Yung sila, Korah, yung tribe niya, um, is responsible for Numbers chapter 3 verse 31 hanggang chapter 4 verse 49 doon natin makikita yung roles ng tribes nila. So, so si Kohath yung father ni Korah. Where are you now? <laughs> so Korah son of Izar, the son of Kohath. Sorry naman. So apo pala ni Kohath. <laughs> apo ni Kohath 
si Cora. And then the number of all the males a month old or more was 8,600. So, ganun karami yung tribe nila. 8,600 males. Males pa lang yun. Wala pa yung mga women. Um, why is this important? I'll tell you in a bit. So, the Kohatites were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. See, it, that's a very important part of the tent of meeting. The sanctuary. The Kohatite clans were to camp on the south side of the tabernacle. Even yung campsite, um, sinasabi ni Lord kung saan sila magkakamp. They were responsible for the care of the Ark. It's the Ark of the Covenant. Um, so, the Ark of the Covenant is actually where the tablet of commandments, yung stone tablet ni Moses, nandun yung staff ni Aaron, and a bowl of mana. Yung tahep ng Ark of the Covenant is called the Mercy Seat, and I think that's where God's presence, I think physical presence, or like uh, manifestation is seen by Moses. And yung Ark of the Covenant is in the Holy of Holies section of the Tent of Meeting and that's again, yun lang yung place kung saan high priest lang ang pwedeng pumasok and it's only Moses. So, that's a very important article. Okay? Um, sila yung responsible sa Ark of the Covenant, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the articles of the sanctuary used in ministering, the curtain, and everything related to their use. And the chief leader of the Levites was Eleazar son of Aaron the priest. He was appointed over those who were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. So see how important their part is. Um, the Israelites, marami sila. See, yung isang tribe pa lang, 8,600 males. Wala pa yung females. So what more yung buong Israelites community? Ang dami nila. Yung mga males na yun, they're the ones responsible or their tribe, the Kohathite tribe. They're the ones responsible for the sanctuary and the articles, the very holy articles, present inside the Tent of Meeting. Itong si Korah, isang araw, kasama niya si Nadathan and Abiram. They're still, you know, relatives of um, Moses. Sila ko mga leaders talaga ng Israelites. O si Korah, kinausap niya ngayon, yung mga tropa niya, si Dathan and si Abiram. They said to themselves, wait lang. Si Moses, bakit? Ang tagal-tagal na niya dyan sa pwestong yan. And then God promised us na pupunta, dalihin tayo ni Moses sa um, land flowing with milk and honey. Pero hanggang ngayon, andito pa rin tayo. Desierto, we haven't reached the place where he said God promised us. So I think it's time to change the management. So, yun yung sinabi ni Cora. And then, ito naman si Dathan and si Abir. I'm like, hmm, ano? Bakit hindi natin siya palitan? So, it's like, you know, this action um, would, hey, lumalabo ako. <laughs> or pag-question sa authority ni Lord. Because Moses is appointed by God. And if you question someone that's appointed by God, then you are actually directly questioning the authority of God. These people that God chose, they are very important people. And it's really important that we also respect them, follow their lead. Because God placed them there for a reason. Si Moses, again, ayaw niya ng position na yan. But, God insisted. God appointed him. So he has to be there. And Moses is doing what he can. Ayun na nga, ito na si na, Dathan and Abiram. Nagkaroon sila ng parang um, conspiracy, ganto ganto ganyan. And actually, they gathered about 250 more leaders. Ito, leaders ito ha. And with them were 250 Israelite men, well-known community leaders who had been appointed members of the council. They came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron and said to them, you have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? So, ayan, nagko-question na sila, di ba? Kasi itong si um, Cora and company, um, they're starting this um, distortion of the truth. You know, when you're blinded by like a selfish kind of ambition, that is. Um, in this case, si Cora, he wants to be a priest like a high priest. He actually wants Aaron's 
position. When you are driven by that or when you're blinded by that kind of ambition, that selfish kind of ambition, you tend to distort the truth. What truth is that? Um, sinasabi nila na Moses is putting himself above the assembly. Hindi si Moses ang nag-appoint nag sa sarili niya. It was God. Okay, so that's one distortion of the truth already. And that's one way of questioning the authority of God. I admire Moses for doing this because when Moses heard that, um, na sinabi ni Korah na, Oy, teka lang, wait lang. Lahat tayo holy dito eh. Lahat tayo um, pinaboro naman ni Lord. So why are you putting yourself above our assembly? Ito naman si Moses. Alam mo yun, kung ikaw sinugod ka ng ganun, agitated ka na kagad, pero si Moses hindi. He fell to his face. This is actually, um, I think this is literal, but this is, this action, yung falling on your face, is actually a form of um, respect. Yukod ka, um, and ilalagay mo yung face mo sa pinakamababang position sa, sa ground. It's a form of prayer, a uh, prayer position, or nagbababa siya, nagiging humble siya, binababaan niya yung kanyang um, sarili nagpapakababa siya. Sabi nga ng ibang mga pastors, si Moses daw, kung makikita natin siya sa heaven, siya raw yung may pinaka-flat na ilong kasi lagi face down. Lagi, all throughout this, makikita nyo na kapag may conflict, Moses will fall face down. That's how he reveres God. And he said to Korah and all his followers, okay, in the morning, the Lord will show you who belongs to him and who is holy. And he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses, he will cause to come near him. You, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. So, our uh, instructions I to take your censers and tomorrow put fire and incense in them before the Lord. The man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You, Levites, have gone too far. And then now listen, you Levites, isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of Israel? Malaking as in, sobrang laki ng Israelites community. Di ba isang bansa nga yan? Itong sila Korah, Kohasites, yung tribe nila ay responsible for the special holy articles ng Tent of Meeting. So, in that way, sila yung nakapalibot sa buong Tent of Meeting. And it's literally and physically, mas malapit sila kay Lord compared to the rest of the Israelites community. So, sinasabi ni Moses sa kanila, Korah, mataas na yung position mo. Hindi pa ba sapat na ang lapit-lapit yun na kay Lord for you to still act this way, for you to still long for a higher position. You are trying to get the priesthood too. It is against the Lord that you and all your followers have banded together. At saka, sino si Aaron that you are going against him? Diba? So, it's like Moses is saying, inappoint ni Lord si Aaron um, for priesthood. Why are you questioning that? And if you will be in the shoes of the Israelites, you've been wondering for a long time already, siguro na frustrate na. Instead of going to the Lord and lifting that burden up to God, ang ginawa ni Korah, sabi niya, wait lang. I think it's time to change the management. You know, at one point in time, nararamdaman natin yan, diba? If we feel like we're just stuck in one place, we're not going anywhere. Parang wala pang nangyayari, parang ayaw na nating tiwala. So, we want to take over. May mga certain people that is there in that position for us to follow. There's a reason behind it. The more you oppose, the more that nothing's going to happen to you. Um, you are placed in that position because God wants you to learn something. Maybe he wants you to learn to be patient. Maybe he wants you to learn the ways of that leader by following him and studying um, his leadership style so that you can become a leader too. God is preparing you. You know, the reason you we are in that position, in this position right now, is because he's preparing us for something greater. Parang ganito lang yan. For example, di ba nagpromise si Lord, um, I will bless you abundantly. Pero if your heart is not ready, for that abundant kind of blessing, you will go astray. Ano yung nangyayari sa mga tao na nananalo sa loto? Very rare na mapapalago nila yung pera nila. Eventually, mauubos yung pera nila. 
because they are not prepared they they don't know how to handle money it's just like that as well um, if the Lord blesses you abundantly and you don't know how to use this abundant blessing from God you will definitely go astray you need to follow his lead you need to learn how to be humble how to be patient how to have wisdom how to have understanding um, and how to love selflessly so that you will know how to use that abundant blessing from God whatever kind of blessing that is your heart has to be prepared for something so great especially when it comes to leadership Moses ayaw niya niyan pero nakita ni Lord yung heart ni Moses um, it's pure you know sinabi ni Moses bakit ganyan ka pa mag-isip? Kora. Sabi ni Moses, pakitawag si Dathan and si Abiram. Pero sabi ni Dathan and Abiram, ayan, sila actually nagsabi nito eh. We will not come. Isn't it enough that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the desert? And now, you also want to lord it over us? Moreover, you haven't brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you gauge out the eyes of these men? No, we will not come. Ang sinasabi nila dito milk and honey na um, that they were taken out up from the land of milk and honey, they're talking about Egypt. Hello. Um, if napanood nyo na yung Prince of Egypt na movie, ba? yung mga Israelites, have you seen? how the Egyptians are treating them. They were treated like trash. They were treated like they're not human beings. There's no justice for them. They're treated badly. They're treated like slaves. Like, wala silang pakialam at all. Pagod ka na? No. Itong statue na to. Expendable slaves. Yes, there is water supply sa Egypt. Malapit sila sa Nile River. Um, but, uh, meron rin dong mga uh, available resources. Pero, nagagamit ba nila yung resources na yun? Grabe yung hirap at pasakit na naranasan nila sa Egypt. They don't have freedom in Egypt. But, God freed them from that land. Okay? So, again, distortion of the truth. Um, iniisip nila ngayon na Egypt ang land flowing with milk and honey. When, in fact, it's somewhere else that's better than Egypt. Because of selfish ambitions, distortion again of the truth. So, nagalit ngayon si Moses, pero hindi doon sa mga taong yun. That's amazing. Pag ikaw, sinagot-sagot ka ng ganyan, how will you feel? Ikaw yung leader, di ba? Leader ka, tapos sinagot-sagot ka ng ganon, how will you feel? You will feel totally disrespected, right? Most, I think most, most leaders, because of pride, they will attack that person, right? But Moses, he didn't do that. He, he got angry, yes. But not to them, but to God. Sabi niya, Lord, teka lang ha. Nakakagalit itong mga to ha. At sakit nila sa banks. Lord, wala akong ginawa sa mga to. Wala akong ginawa sa kanila. Wala akong kinuha kahit isang donkey. Hindi ko sila sinaktan. Wala akong atras sa kanila. Whatever it is na bibigay nila sa'yo, huwag mong tanggapin. Sabi ni Moses. So, nagsumbong siya ngayon. Parang nagsusumbong siya sa tatay niya. But dad, wala akong ginagawa dyan ha. Nakakainis yan ha. Parang ganun. So, instead of getting angry at that, those persons, he threw his burden, his anger, to God. Ganun. Ganun yung relationship nila. Di ba? And you know what? God wants us to have that kind of relationship with him too. After Moses sumbong siya kay God, sabi niya, kay Cora, when all your followers are to appear before the Lord tomorrow, you and they and Aaron. Each man is to take his censer and put incense in it, 250 censers in all, and present it before the Lord. You and Aaron are to present your censers also. Okay, ano yung censer? Ang censer, yun yung lalagyan ng incense. Pausukan as a sign of um, respect, reverence kay Lord. If you read through Leviticus, um, only high priests can um, burn those incense. Uh, hindi lahat. Hindi lahat ng tao pwedeng mag-burn ng incense doon sa tent of meeting. No, not everyone. Only the high priests, um, I think Moses and Aaron, um, they're the only ones who can do that. 
So each man took his censer, put fire and incense in it, and stood with Moses and Aaron at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Okay? When Korah had gathered all his followers in opposition to them at the entrance to the tent of meeting, the glory of the Lord appeared to the entire assembly. Ha? Kasi ang sabi ni Lord, hindi lahat pwedeng mag burn ng incense. May mga certain tao lang ang pwedeng gumawa niyan. Okay? Pero itong mga taong to, kulit nyo ha. Sige, sabi ni Mo, sige, gawin nyo yan. O ngayon, nagpakita si Lord doon sa assembly. Hindi pa sila nakakapasok sa tent of meeting ha. Because again, the tent of meeting is a very, very sacred place. Sabi ni Lord kay Moses and kay Aaron, Oy, separate yourselves from them. I'm gonna burn them all. I'll destroy them all. Diba? Okay lang sa akin yun. Mag-start tayo ng panibaw. So, akong bahala sa inyo. Pero hindi sinabi ni Lord yun ha. Pero parang ganun lang. Sunugin na natin sila. Pero, oh my gosh, this is why God chose Moses to do this. To be high priest. Siguro normal na tao. Sige niya, sige Lord. Go, sunugin mo sila. You know, that's that's one selfish, you know, desire. But Moses and Aaron, no. Alam mo ginawa nila? They fell face down again. And they begged. They begged the Lord. Sabi nila, Lord, teka lang, wait. Bakit mo sila lahat susunugin? Isang tao lang yung nagkasala. I mean, why will you kill 250 people? For the sin of just one man. The humility. The pure kind of heart. Na parang, Lord, hindi. Huwag mo silang, no. Na ano lang sila, dami lang sila. Isa lang ang may gusto nito. So please, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. Si Lord, sabi niya, o oh, sige, sige. Moses, sabihan mo tong mga asem, tong assembly na hindi nag address si Lord directly sa assembly. It has to go through Moses. Because again, si Moses nga yung appointed, di ba? Did you see the, the hierarchy? How holy God is. Because again, anyone who sees God will die. But if it goes, or if, if the message goes through Moses first, and then through the whole assembly, and then, you know, um, everything should be fine. Ni Lord ngayon, oh, sige, sige, sige. Pagsabihan mo yung mga yan, lumayo sila, sa mga tents ni Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Lumayo silang lahat. Move away. Yan sabi niya, move away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the assembly, move back from the tents of these wicked men. Do not touch anything belonging to them. Huwag kayong ahawak ng kahit na anong pag-aari nila. Huwag kayong lalapit sa tent nila at all. Or, or you will be swept away because of all their sins. O, oh, diba? So, natakot ngayon yung mga tao, yung assembly, yung 250. Yung assembly na yan, 250. Oh my God, sige, sige, layo na tayo, layo na tayo, ganyan. Layuan sila ngayon. And, yung tents ni na Cora, Dathan, and Abiram, this is why I said it's heavy. Um, dun sa mga tents na yon mga bes, andun yung pamilya, pamilya asawa, mga anak, maliliit na bata, sons and daughters, Nina, Dathan, Abiram, and Nikora. Their family is connected to them. Like, there's no escape for them. Oh my God, madadama yung buong family. You know, isipin ko, you know, by this time, takot na talaga ako. And I will, I will ask the Lord, Lord, I'm so sorry if I felt this way. Um, just please do not hurt my family. I would, you know, feel that way. I don't know if um, Dathan, Abiram, and and Cora felt the same way. Ang feeling ko hindi ganun yung ano eh, na feel nila at that time eh. Um, I think they were like really really blinded by that um, vile, selfish ambition to lead and to have that priesthood position. Just so sad. So anyway, um, yun nga, nandun yung family nila sa mga tent. So sabi ngayon ni Moses, para nga patunayan natin na appointed talaga ako ni Lord. Itong mga wicked men na to, so he's talking about Abiram, Dathan, and um, Korah, hindi ako appointed ni Lord, these wicked men will die naturally. Pero, if I am appointed by God, they will die of like truly unnatural causes. Earth will open up and swallow them up. Ngayon, pagkatapos na pagkatapos magsarita ni Moses, oh my God, biglang bumuka yung lupa, nilamon lahat ng tents, lahat ng ari-arian 
ni Cora Dathan in Adiram. And then it closed. Boom. Ganon. It just closed right after. And parang wala nangyari. Parang, oh my god. They're buried alive. Like all of them. Not just the three men, but their families, their livestock, everything they own. Their tents, lahat. Oh my god. Buried alive. Just like that. See how powerful our God is? That's so heavy for me because just because of your selfish ambition, you drag your family down with you. Upon reading that, I'm like, shucks, grabe. <laughs> grabe yung galit ni Lord. Because again, these wicked men, they question the authority of God. <sighs> so heavy. Hindi yung tatapos dyan, mga bes. He's 250 men naman. Because, kasama rin sila eh. Diba? I mean, if someone tells you something bad about God, and then you agree, and you sumama ka sa mga gusto nilang mangyari, I mean, kasama ka na. I mean, kasama ka na sa tribe nila. Going against the authority of God. So, because of that, that 250 men, they died to fire, scorch these men to death. Oh my goodness talaga. Yung mga tao ngayon, natakot sila. Yari, kinain ka ng lupa. Sunog ka pa, may sinunog pa. There's more. After all of that, um, so God spoke again. Sabi ni Lord, kay Aaron and Moses, have Eleazar, yung anak ni Aaron, to collect all the censers because yung censers ay holy. Collect the censers from the burnt flesh. Hammer the censers into sheets to overlay the altar, for they were presented before the Lord and have become holy. Uh, let them be assigned to the Israelites. So, ginawa nga ni Eliezer yun. Kinolek niya yung mga censers, hinammer up niya, and turned it into overlay for the altar. Sobrang dami ng mga namatay um, at that point. Ito nga muna ngayon. <laughs> Tapos sabi siguro ni, ni Moses nito, tsaka ni Aaron, What a day! Okay, so, sige, pre, pahinga muna tayo, ah. So, tulog tayo. Tulog sila. The next day, you thought, magiging okay na. Kasi tapos na, mga pasaway, wala na sila. Isipin mo, okay na. Pero hindi. So, everyone else, they went against Moses too. They accused Moses. You killed all those men. And distortion of the truth. Pinakay ba ni Moses yun? Hindi. <laughs> Ni naman si Moses ang may gawa nun. It was God. How can Moses do that? It wasn't Moses. It was God. So, again, distortion of the truth and questioning the authority of God. Oh my goodness. Si Lord nagalit. Nagalit talaga ng husto. There's really no appeasing. There's really no way to soul God at this point in time. As in, sobrang, sobra na. So, ito na yung nangyari. When they gathered, yung assembly na naman, ito, they gathered na naman. Stand of meeting, and then, kahit na naman sila, inatak na naman nila si Moses and si Aaron. cloud covered it. The cloud covered the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron went to the front of the tent of meeting, and the Lord said to Moses, Get away! from this assembly so I can put an end to them. And they fell face down. That's right. Diba? They fell face down again. Nagmakaawa na naman sila. Pero no. At this point in time, sabi ni Moses, Aaron, Aaron, dali. Bisa mo. Mukha ka ng apoy. Ay nang nang baga. Lagay mo dun sa sensor. Mag-alay ka ng incense. So, bilisan mo. Kasi, magpapalabas na si Lord ng plague. And the plague is going to kill all these people. So, alam mo yun? Naisip niyo na ba? Um, so, the tent of meeting, I mean, kukuha si Aaron ng um, fire from the altar. May fire doon sa altar, eh. So, kumuha siya ng fire doon. Nagsindi siya ng incense. So, medyo it will take a few minutes lang. Pero magubaga naman agad yun. And then, uusok na yun agad. You know, few minutes. Aaron um, managed to, to burn the incense. Um, offer incense for the atonement, for the forgiveness of the sins of the people. Kasi lahat sila nagkasala, they went against authority of God. So, he went sa middle of the assembly. And you know what? When he went to the middle of the assembly, kung saan nagpuesto si Aaron, doon nag-stop yung plague. Yung first part of the assembly, 
they all died. Do you know that's 14,700 people plus yung 250 leaders ng community. So in just just like that, they all died. That's really heavy. Eventually, God will He will ask of you know for for the twelve staffs and for Aaron's staff to be yung staff ni Aaron um to be displayed um, in the tent of the testimony so that the people will stop grumbling. You know this grumbling, this mumbling, machismis na pangit na yan. God doesn't want that because it's creating a distortion of the truth and it veers us away from what God wants for us. Because of your selfish ambitions, selfish ambitions of Korah, so many people died. For someone who doesn't know the truth, for someone who didn't see what really happened, they will blame Moses. Tina mo, the 14,700 people who died, plus among others, they blamed Moses because they thought Moses killed them all. Truth. They didn't see what really happened. I bet they know that these people went against Moses because of, you know, some reasons. Pero they didn't really know the truth, right? And this is like a challenge to all of us as well. Because, you know, our, our selfish ambitions, it tends to distort the truth, makes us lie about things so that we can would be able to reach our goals, our selfish goals. It's not, you know, really healthy, especially if we are gathering people, if we are getting sympathy from people and they are following our example and like leading them somewhere negative, somewhere far away from God. This is really a challenge to all of the leaders. We are leaders in our own little way. We're leaders of the family if you're a parent. Leader ka if kuya ka ng mga kapatid mo. Leader ka if boss ka ng isang company. If you lead a certain group of people, if you're influencing a group of people, you're a leader. As a leader, there's a certain kind of responsibility na hindi ka lang basta-basta magsasalita just for the sake of it. But you have to speak the truth at all times. The truth is easily distorted. Just a twist of words, it will give impact, big impact coming from you. And then, nakarating doon sa part na yun, sa kabilang tribe, it sometimes get distorted. And that veers us away from God's truth. Just narrating the story, it's just really heavy. Because ang dami mong madamay. Sabi nga na sa feng shui, napanag niyo ba yan? Ang dami mong dinamay. Sabi ni Chris Aquino. Ang daming dinamay ni Cora. Ano ba yung ambition niya? Maging priest. So, siya lang naman yung magiging priest eh. Yung buong 250 ba magiging priest? Yung buong community ba magiging priest? No, siya lang eh. Siya lang yung may kinabang nun. Um, because personal selfish ambition yung meron siya. It's just heartbreaking na pati family mo, mga anak mo, and all these other people nadamay because of your selfish ambition. It's, it's so sad. It's a wake-up call, especially for the leaders, for our leaders today. Ha? It's very important that we pray for our leaders para i-lead tayo nila ng talagang maayos. Not towards distraction, but towards progress, towards safety. Um, kaya nga ginagawa ko rin yung Wednesday devotional is because I want to pray for everyone because we need that. We need God all the time. But especially now in this time of the pandemic where chaos, um, we're so problematic. Our government's problematic. And that's why we have to pray for our leaders talaga. Um, and I encourage you to pray for everyone too, especially for our leaders para maging safe tayong lahat, para maging mali tayo to progression and not lead us astray. Okay, I want to know your thoughts about this story. Um, I really want to hear from you. Um, let me know your thoughts um, on the comment section down below. Um, do you think it's fair that God did this to Cora? Um, why or why not? Were you able to relate as well? Um, 
because in the modern times uh, this also happens um, I hope that story inspires you to become a better version of yourself to become a better leader to always check your heart because before you become you know a person with authority or a person with position you need to learn the basics um, and you have to have a heart like his because if hindi ka prepared for that position then if you're not yet ready for his plans then you will be stuck there let God break you let God lead you never um, defile the authority of God because you see what happened and this is actually why I so appreciate the coming of Jesus Christ his sacrifice to redeem all of us wala na tayong gagawing pagsasacrifice sa altar wala na tayong gagawing pag-offer ng animals to atone for our sins because you know just a side note ha yung mga tao dati lalo na yung mga girls girls and boys ito very simple lang to ha this is this is a natural um, part of our existence um, when a man has a discharge like a semen discharge whether bata ka pa or may asawa ka na and then you have a semen discharge um, and then for a woman naman na merong menstrual cycle that period in time na nagkaroon ka ng discharge you are unclean and you have to atone for that you have to ask for forgiveness for that seven days after matapos ng discharge mo on the eighth day um i mean for seven days that period you're unclean on the eighth day you have to offer two doves or two small pigeon imagine ang daming tao sa israel all of them has to kill animals not just pigeons huh what if nagnakaw ka what if meron kang isang command ni lord na na break so hindi lang doves ang iaalay mo but rams sheep goats all that livestock when jesus died for all of us wala na lahat yun wala nang high priest na high priest lang ang makapasok sa tent of meeting so that he can talk to god directly no wala na yun eh jesus tore the veil alam niyo yung mga veils na yan it's nine centimeters thick and only again high priests can go inside and you know jesus tore that veil so that god can speak to us directly hindi na kailangan through a high priest diba so oh my god um when you go through the old testament and the new testament stories that's when you will really appreciate jesus christ in your life this is how much he loves us um the very sad story of cora and his peeps dathan and abiram and the 250 and 14,700 people who died with him because of his <sighs> i'm laughing i'm sorry hindi siya pero because of his selfish ambitions again a wake-up call to all of us to always check our hearts because god sees our desires and that's what my prayer is um, for all of us as well that god gives us a heart like his this i end this storytelling um, session i hope you got inspired and i hope god speaks to you again choose to be kind choose to love god loves you so much and i'll see you again next saturday bye